Welcome everyone to Amazon Corporate Studios classes for min-maxing the fun out of MMORPGs. Today's lesson is all about speed woodcutting, brought to you by everyone's favourite loser, Nerdy McNeckbeard Face, to demonstrate how to ruin the economy of an MMORPG and get you to quit as soon as possible. And it's literally just that simple. <laughs> so, any questions? Uh, what about you there? Oh, uh, yeah, that's great, but doesn't that kind of ruin the game? Oh, uh, well, I suppose, uh, what was it? Uh, Intrepid Studios, right? <laughs> Isn't that some indie developer? N nothing quite like the might of Amazon's developers. Uh, w why don't you show us what you can do, Sproutling? Uh, well, sure, I mean... Hey, what up, boys? So, before we begin, you're probably wondering, why haven't you gotten rid of your Halloween decorations yet? And, well, the answer to that is simple. I'm lazy. Anyway, now that I've had time to absorb every nanosecond of the livestream five times over, we shall be diving deep into the gathering for this highly anticipated MMORPG. We'll be discussing the implications for solo players, the interesting progression plans, and of course, some juicy, juicy feedback from me and you guys down in the comments below. But before we get into that, our patrons and I would love for you to Grab yourself a Cooper Cola because lately Ashes of Creation has been labeled as a game not for solo players. However, this simply isn't the case. The problem is that we have yet to see the solo side of this game be shown properly, but this is no longer. With the Artisan systems finally being revealed, it's about time we fixed this little issue and discussed my favourite gameplay loop in an MMORPG. Picking flowers whilst watching my favourite slice of life anime. <coughs> now, with all that bollocks out of the way, let's begin, shall we? Now, before we begin, I obviously need to emphasise that Artisan gameplay isn't the only solo gameplay loop that will be available in Ashes of Creation. I am merely utilising a little bit of hyperbole here to push a narrative. It is just difficult for me to talk about the solo side of the game, like questing, progression and exploration, or fuck all about it. But now the first and arguably most important of the three Artisan skills have been revealed, I can finally start peddling that sweet, sweet solo gameplay play copium to convince you that this game does indeed appeal to balding middle-aged dads who don't actually like socializing in their massively multiplayer online role-playing game. But nah, no, you unwashed, ungroomed copium addict. I, I don't care about gathering or processing or crafting, so none of this actually applies to me. And for that, I'd be forced to look down upon you again and feel disappointed that another Theme Park Andy has stumbled upon my videos because, uh, Sand Park MMO functions much, much differently to what you're probably used to. So, if you're willing, allow me to part my knowledge onto you, my friend, and explain why the economic and artisan side of Ashes of Creation encourages and rewards solo players in ways that are currently popular, uh, MMOs seem to have forgotten. Economy is the lifeblood of an MMORPG. Without a solid economy, the game crashes and burns. Motivation runs dry as players have no meaningful way to generate cash to progress their characters or maintain their gear. This is what happened at the launch of New World, as the geniuses at Amazon Corporate Studios decided hiring an economic specialist was gonna affect their bottom line too much. You see, none of the corporate drones over at Amazon possess 
just the mental capacity to consider the impact on the marketplace when 2,000 players were speed gathering 10,000 wood, stone, and hide per hour. Surely duping was the real reason everything cost 0.01 gold in the first couple of days, right? Not the severe lack of material sinks or passive gold generation. No, I read on Reddit one time that some randos were duping, so... That must be the problem. <laughs> a multi-billion dollar company like Amazon would, would never make such stupid mistakes and, and choose profit over making a good game, right? So now the emphasis on economy within an MMORPG has been set using the solo player mentality, hopefully this allows you to understand the weight masses of individuals can have on a game's success. It's no secret that a large majority of MMO players enjoy playing solo, and I don't blame them. People are retarded after all, and as the average IQ of MMO gamers has declined since Blizzard slowly stripped us of our social freedom, the very thought of interacting with another… Uh, consumer genuinely scares me. However, that doesn't mean we as individuals are not part of a social ecosystem that fuels the economy of a server. In fact, that is the beauty of a free market within an MMORPG and one of the core reasons why I love to focus on artisan gameplay. Every time you make a monetary transaction through the crafting, gathering, and processing side of these games, it fuels the social gameplay that breathes life into the virtual worlds we're trying to spend thousands of hours in. Uh, provided it's not New World, of course, because we all quit that game in a matter of days. But with Ashes of Creation basically using the same gathering mechanics that New World did, will this highly anticipated MMORPG face the same problems? Well, I already predicted they wouldn't back during my economic exploration of New World, and uh, now the plans are officially revealed, I can safely back up my previous claims with solid evidence using MMORPG in the past that utilize exactly what was shown. So let's jump into that next. Progression is an interesting topic when it comes to MMORPGs. Depending on the context of the game, different types of progression affect gameplay in many different ways. With this month's livestream, we got a tease into Ashes of Creation's progression paths, and using this new information together with what we already know, we can pretty clearly tell how these mechanics will play out during the initial testing. First of all, let's talk about the most obvious difference Ashes Gathering has compared to our currently popular MMOs the regrowth mechanic. For those of you unaware, when rocks, trees, flora, and game respawn in Ashes of Creation, it isn't after mere moments like your traditional MMOs, it, it takes a significant amount of time to respawn, and each of the resources have growth stages to them to indicate to the players how recently they've been harvested and how long they have left until harvestable again. Now, many of... <coughs> Now, many of you may be thinking to yourself, damn, that's a pretty unique mechanic and there's no way they can pull this off in an MMORPG, right? This seems almost impossible in an open world, let alone one that's seamless, dynamic, PvP focused, over 1.2 kilometers squared, player driven, social, and has no fast travel. It'll be fine, I, I'm sure, I'm sure it'll be fine. Well, actually, my friend, uh, this isn't unique at all. This is exactly how resources work in Arcage, one of Ashes of Creation's main inspirations. And I was ecstatic to see that Intrepid have chosen to mimic this genius economic idea alongside New World's highly praised gathering mechanics. This alone is enough to prevent the insane material flooding that we saw in New World as it, one, prevents players from gathering indefinitely flooding the market with base materials from day one. Two, fuels a social economic environment, encouraging etiquette among the player base, both through competition or teamwork. And three, rewards progression in ways that are meaningful and satisfying by allowing players to specialize down specific paths to gain access to resources other players cannot. So let's talk about the progression side of this now, something that sadly both New World and Arcage were lacking in very 
different ways. Sure, New World had vertical progression that allowed you to access new materials through hard-gated levels. However, this is a very shallow form of progression that doesn't allow you to specialize in anything and everyone can eventually access everything. Not a great plan. But on the opposite side of the spectrum, we have Arcage, focusing on a very open sandbox nature, purposefully allowing everyone to access everything, but slowly stacking up expertise through wood chopping over long periods of time. Or, alternatively, the main way to specialize was by wearing gear that boosted it by large amounts to reach certain thresholds. These thresholds, however, were very minor and hardly even worth mentioning, which is where Arcage failed its progression, in my opinion. I actually did a deep dive of the whole system during my Arcage series, where we looked at all the core systems, compared them to Ashes of Creation, and provided some feedback that Intrepid could use to improve the primitive mechanics in that much beloved, but sadly neglected, MMORPG. So let's briefly talk about Ashes of Creation now before providing our own feedback for what we saw during this month's livestream. Because Intrepid are aiming for a living, breathing ecology system layered with season-exclusive materials, it's fairly safe to say that the materials will remain scarce and in high demand, fueling economy and artisan gameplay in the correct ways, utilizing both vertical leveling skill trees and gear to boost your proficiency. In theory, as you progress, you'll gain easier access to trees, rock, and flora at earlier stages of their growth, and maybe even unlock entirely unique materials only after you progress and specialize beyond a certain point. Ashes of Creation has always been about social gameplay, and even though the gathering is a very solo gameplay loop, it's the economy itself that brings everyone together in a living, breathing, massively multiplayer world, and uh, modern MMOs have completely forgotten that in favor of a more single-player curated experience. Now, I could talk about the surveying system they teased, however, today's video is getting fairly long and I genuinely want to give it proper time, and I think it's actually more of a solution to many concerns people have with Ashes of Creation's ecology. So, I will save my discussion about this for that upcoming video. For now though, let's jump into some feedback. Although what we saw this month was great quality, there were some fairly obvious aesthetic problems on display that should be a fairly easy fix. Their physics-based collision mechanics were a great start, however, I don't think anyone is claiming it's perfect in its current form. The branches looked rubbery and unrealistic, but this is mere teething problems that I'm confident Intrepid can fix after a few quality passes. Additionally, the actual cut on the tree itself was fairly clean, considering that we're using a simple felling axe to decapitate these helpless trees, I'd much prefer to see a very rough cut indicative of actual real-life lumberjack work rather than a clean slice. Additionally, in aid of fueling the social and competitive gameplay of Ashes of Creation's Gathering Loop, I'm hoping one of the respawn phases of these trees is actually just the stump itself. Instead of the whole tree despawning after it's felled, I'd rather the stump remained for a significant amount of time so players have a clear indication that others have recently been in the area. If we're aiming for a social living breathing world here, indications of recent player activity is very important and this should be clear for rocks, flora and game as well. Finally, the last piece of feedback I have is the sound design. I do think the sound effects they have are very good quality and most certainly match New World. However, it wasn't the sound effects themselves that made it so special. New World utilized a long-distance echo that we've never seen before in an MMORPG. This was not only exclusive to Gathering, but also the combat as well, to breathe life into a seemingly empty area, using the general Gathering and gameplay sound effects to let others know there are people nearby. It's this particular part of New World that is praised, not so much the sound effects themselves. Sharper, louder impacts upon the rocks 
and trees echoing throughout the zone is what I want to see be implemented into Ashes of Creation. And although this may already be the case, it is currently impossible to tell when the showcases are just a single man in an empty testing environment. With that said, I will conclude today's video with a question for you. My dear viewer, were you pleased with this month's showcase? Is there any feedback you guys have that you want to express to Intrepid after hearing mine? I personally think the showcase was a great start, but a start it was indeed. Very solid foundations, but still a fairly long way to go, not only for the core mechanics, but for allowing it to work in a seamless open world. But as usual, I am just one nerd desperate for a good MMO. And my opinions mean nothing without yours in the comments below. And hey, things are starting to smooth back out in my real life now, so uh, the upload schedule should be back to normal by the end of this month. I have a jam-packed upload schedule for you guys now that the Patreon stuff is sorted. This includes a bunch of memes, epic intros, and some of that sweet, sweet copium-filled content. So, I'm looking forward to getting back on track, and I'll see you in the next one. But Nark, this was nothing special. It's terrible and smells of a gant fest. Pantheon is the true savior of a mimolos, not this failure. And to that I say, listen kid, literally everyone forgot Pantheon even existed, and if you still think Visionary Realms are even bothering to make a game, then... Joppa called, he needs to purchase a new unity pack to scam you all with because you're high on copium.